Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the Town of Portland, Portland School District podcast. I'm your host, Dave Kosminski, and we are here in the Town Tech Educational Podcast Studio with our superintendent of schools, Dr. Charles Britton. Good morning, Charles. How are you this morning? Good morning. Good morning. Happy Happy Earth Day. Yeah, it is Earth Day. Yep. Yes. Yes. So uh, we are. Uh, things are getting a little bit better. We're starting to open things up. Um, vaccinations are, you know, as far as in relation to Connecticut, we're you know, way ahead of everybody else in the country, so which is a good thing. And uh, now we're embarking on the, the, the budget season. So <laughs> bring us up to date on where we are. Yeah, well, it's, it's wonderful. Um, I'm happy to report that the Friday before April vacation, um, our faculty and staff, uh, by the majority of our faculty and staff, those who chose to, got their second shots. Yes. Right? So, mm-hmm. you know, from what I understand, it's, it's 14 days after that that you reach that full immunity. Mm-hmm. So um, tomorrow. Yes, we're there. We're there. I mean, it's 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 wonderful. It's we're, we it's it's we're on the other side at this point. I so think that, so. That changes the game entirely. Absolutely. And now um, everybody's eligible to it. Our certainly our students who are sixteen and older mm-hmm. are are eligible. I'm, I'm reading uh, regularly that they're um, in trial, and and I imagine there's going to be emergency authorizations for younger mm-hmm. uh, children. So we're in a really good place there, and and. Yeah, we're we're getting back to normal. It's it's wonderful. Um, so now it's kind of time to talk about other things, right? We've been sort Absolutely. of saying it'll be nice when we reach a point where we can talk about other things besides hybrids and remote and masks yeah. and social distancing. And and I think we're there now. And I'd, I'd love to spend some time with you in the community talking about the budget and, and, and where we are. A- absolutely. I know the uh, the COVID situation has been basically taken all of the oxygen out of the all air. All of the so, oxygen, yeah. Anyway, so, so anyway, we, we basically are, are uh, embarking uh, on the, the budgetary process. I think we have our referendum, which is coming up May 10th, and I know um, the town, as Susan and her staff, and as well as your staff, have been working diligently and in, in, uh in, in developing a budget uh, going forth, so uh, uh, I know it's 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 never uh, an easy process never. Uh, as far as that goes, and it's uh, uh, you know I always say <laughs> yeah, a lot of times you get into a situation there's always too much month at the end of the money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so um, how have the? I know you guys work very hard with your administrative team and so forth on uh, crafting a budget. So uh, uh, give us a little inkling of uh, what's what's going to happen. Sure, and um, let, let me just kind of uh, introduce it by saying that it is it is never appropriate for a superintendent or a public official to tell people how to vote. Right. Um, Correct. That, that it would be wrong for me to come out and say vote for or vote against this budget. That 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 is not something I'm ever going to do. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, um, I don't, I think it would be against the law if I did in some respects too. Uh, and then and I wouldn't do that even if it because it unethically it feels wrong anyway. To, sure. To tell people how to vote. Um, oh but, yeah, you're 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 thwarting the democratic process. Right. The, the the democratic process is something we have to cherish. It would be wrong for me to tell you what politician to vote for. Um, it would be wrong for me to tell you how to, you, you know, exercise the franchise, except it's, mm-hmm. it's entirely appropriate for me to encourage people to vote, right? Including our 18-year-old students. Who Absolutely. Maybe for some of whom, this will be their first, their first time. first time, yeah. Right? So go vote. That is May 10th. It is very important that your voice is heard and that you have a say in this. It is also really important for me um, to provide information about what you're voting for. Right. Sure. So mm-hmm. that's what I'd love to spend some time with you today is, is, sure, is making sure that not only people um, know when the, the, that is, mm-hmm. May 10th, but also what it is that, that they would advocate for or against. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, operating public schools is, is very complicated. There are lots of mandates. There are things we must provide. And, and we work in a realm that we really have very little discretion over our budgets. Correct. You know, our budgets... Ninety percent of them are dictated by contracts and working conditions and labor laws and negotiated agreements and um, contractual cost of living increases and and um, there's a very little little flexibility we have. Sure. Um, and that that is has again been the case this year. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, the, generally, the way I would describe um, this year's budget is is as a status quo budget. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, we we are we are not adding anything, and and we're not taking anything away. 
right? We're, we're trying to maintain the core of what we have mm-hmm. because the core is, is strong. It, it is good and we, ne- we need to continue that. And sure. um, it's also important for me um, to ensure the, the taxpayers of this community who generously fund our schools with their property tax dollars that we watch every penny mm-hmm. um, and we use every penny, penny only in the pursuit of providing our, our students the, the finest possible education. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we've we've accomplished that again, um, and um, would love to give you some of those those details. Sure, absolutely. Well, I, you know, I think every budget, not only uh, in this district and this town, but uh, you know, all, all of our municipalities throughout the, uh, you know, 169 towns throughout the state, you know, are we're kind of all in the same boat, mm-hmm. you know. And unfortunately, is it's uh, it gets to the point that. Uh, to, to try to maintain things and keep, you have to, you have to, uh, you know, expend the money and, and to keep what you have. Otherwise you get uh, going behind and it, it, it takes you twice as much money. Okay. Later on to try to catch up. So yeah. Oh, uh, you know, how did you uh, go about crafting? And I know, uh, yep. you know, from a standpoint of uh, all of the programs that uh, are, are within the school system, I know we're one of the very, uh, not few school districts, but, you know, we're in a good place where uh, all of our devices are one-to-one with mm-hmm. the students, which is a good thing, and a lot of districts aren't in that situation. So uh, that is a significant cost. So For sure. So in, in general, I think anybody that um, either runs a, a, a business budget or even a, a home budget mm-hmm. understands that, that in general things only get more expensive each year. Yeah. You know, there are oh, absolutely. Our general cost of living in- increases that, that we see each year, you know, uh, especially I think, you know, I had to re- repair some uh, rotted boards on my back deck and oh my God, the cost of lumber oh God. these days is, is uh, ridiculous. Sure. Right? You know, two by fours were, I think were costing me like 750 or something yeah. at home. Yeah, they used to be 250 Yeah. So we, every year things go up. Yep. Right. And, and that's the same in municipalities. Generally, as I as I've studied budgets and, and developed budgets, I I think of that number three percent. You, mm-hmm. you know, generally year to year, to keep what you have and and keep moving forward with what you have, it's about a three percent increase that mm-hmm. you pay for things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and in our business, that's um, you know insurance costs go up and and the costs of um, what we need in fuel and, and all the things that run these buildings generally mm-hmm. go up. So, again, as I looked at the budget this year, um, I, I, I was looking at, you know, you know around 3% is, is where I was starting, you know, the, the discussion about not adding anything, not taking anything significant away, but how can we allocate our resources so that we get in that 3% ballpark? Mm-hmm. And I worked with my administrative team, and that, this starts back in November. Sure. Where we were around the end of November when we were, were looking at the big picture, we actually were at 3.97. So mm-hmm. we're clear closer to 4%. And at that time, you know, we didn't know, we didn't have all of the, the, the firm numbers to work with. We were, were working with a lot of projections. Mm-hmm. And one of the main projector, projections and, and drivers of the budget is the cost of insurance. Yeah. We were shocked this year at the the premium increases in insurance because insurance companies are responding to and gearing up for COVID costs. You yes. Know, we were hearing from our insurance consultants that they're increasing insurance because of the long haulers for COVID. And as we know about insurance pools, every, everybody pays into it. And yep. you know, when you're sick, it, you know, insurance covers you. And, and when you're healthy, you still pay. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that sort of sp- is how the insurance adjusters work. Yep. Um, I will say um, our first select woman, um, she's an amazing negotiator. Uh, yes, she, and she I is. sat down with our insurance consultants and, and she was a pit bull with them mm-hmm. and um, pushed them off of the numbers where they were starting, which yep. were somewhere around 12% increases yep. and got it way lower. Mm-hmm. And, and because of her efforts and, and, and my efforts and, and the work of our, our consultants, we adjusted that number and, and ended up at, at that point, when I was presenting to the board at about 3.12%, right? So sure. thank you to Susan. And, and boy, I wouldn't want to be on the other side of the table negotiating with her. She's a, she's a tiger, right? Yes, yes, she is. <laughs> um, and, and that's, that's, that's you know, the budget was at 312 And we continued working it. You know, I can, 
presented it to the board. That's what they, they passed. Um, and, and that 3.12 kept us largely whole. Again, it's mm-hmm. not um, changing anything significantly. Mm-hmm. You know, it's keeping our programs, allowing us to meet all of our mandates. Um, and we have a few tweaks here and there, which I'll talk about shortly. But generally, 3.12. Now, from that, we did make some some changes. You know, we we had to make some reductions um, to to you know keep the number where um, it needed to be, mm-hmm. um, which is a, a reasonable place for our taxpayers. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the changes we made, for example, was um, we decided that we had to reduce some of our administrative positions, mm-hmm. um, and we've reduced. We're not going to have a full time. Um, administrative athletic director next year. Mm-hmm. Um, the athletic director position is being cut and, and it's going to become a teaching position. We will still have an athletic coordinator, yep. um, but that was one of the, the cuts we had to make. Sure, um, We did reduce some some of our um, administrative support because of uh, retirements. Um, we did reduce some of our um, paraprofessional um, mm-hmm. um, positions and, and we did collapse a couple of our, our teaching positions Again, everybody's hopefully staying in, in these positions, but as a function of retirements and, and um, tweaks that we were able to do, we, we, we made some cuts to, to keep it at that 3.12. Um, and that's where the board um, voted and, and uh, set the budget number. Mm-hmm. Then what happened um, was, as, as everybody's aware, we, we've received uh, uh, some, I guess, a we would call it recovery money, stimulus money. Yes, from CARES the, money. Yeah. CARES money from, from the federal government. Mm-hmm. And that, that's come in two packages, right? The, the first package was actually passed when um, President Trump was in office, mm-hmm. and that was called the ESSER2 mm-hmm. package. And then the second package was passed um, when uh, President Obama, Obama, excuse me, Obama, Biden took Biden. office, yep. um, and that's the American Rescue Plan. Mm-hmm. So... We haven't done anything with the American Rescue Plan funds yet. That's uh, uh, about nine hundred and thirty thousand dollars, which mm-hmm. you know we're going to use uh, mm-hmm. over the next two to three years. And yep. and you know that I haven't learned a lot about um, the application and, and and the windows and and when we oh, need yeah. to apply for that. But we have now applied uh, a part of the ESSER two funds. We had to learn about this very quickly, and this was oh yeah, uh, uh, it's pretty. A lot of reading and figuring out how this is, this works because these this has never happened generally to superintendents exactly. before, and but we've also never managed a pandemic. Um, so we did apply some of those funds to help with the budget, and then reduced the budget from three point one two percent. Now we're down to two point oh five. Right? Oh, and, okay. And and that's where we are. Yeah. yeah. And that's the um, that's what our, our taxpayers are are going to be voting um, mm-hmm. on 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 May tenth. Yeah. Well, I think, too, from a, the, the budget standpoint now, what you guys are doing on, on your side, okay, Susan is also doing on the governmental side. So yep. um, melding that together to basically present a, uh, a, a total package to our citizenry. Um, uh, and, again, um, both you guys have worked very diligently to, you know, uh, keep costs in check and, and, and so forth, and by the same token, providing the services that, you know, our uh, residents expect. Because, again, a lot of times when you get into a situation, and we're not the only town, but you have you have older citizens that are on a fixed income that don't have kids in the school system and, and so forth. And, and relatively speaking, when you look at proportions of, of, of budgets uh, throughout Connecticut from, you know, education side versus the government side, it, usually the education side is significantly larger. Right. You know, as far as that, but that's the nature of the beast. That's right. And and for that that two percent increase, you know, we everything we're going to keep our class sizes reasonable. We are not cutting our program of studies. We're actually adding a little bit at the high school. We're adding new health curriculum. Um, that's part of why we needed the cut in the um, administrative mm-hmm. athletic director because that we need we're, we're offering now junior health, which is a, a state mandate and some changes. We're also going to continue to. Um, offer all of our extracurricular, co-curricular um, activities, our all of our athletics, our fine and performing arts programs, you know, live and in person, please, next yes. year. Right? Yes. <laughs> so for that 2.05%, um, 2. everything that um, 
the community embraces and loves our music programs, our, our, our class sizes, our administrative support, our counseling support, our social emotional programming is here. Yes. And um, so if, if folks are, are, are comfortable with, with what we have, please, you know, um, that, that, is, that is what is, is currently in the budget. And uh, we haven't had to, you know, make any draconian cuts to, to the core of our programs. Yeah, that's, that's important. You know, I think, again, kind of keeping what you have and, and uh, being able to supply a, a quality education, uh, you know, throughout uh, the district, not only from the high school level, but down into the, the elementary uh, level. Because, uh, you know, with this pandemic, uh, sometimes you think that, yeah. you know, we've been hybrid and it been, uh, you know, Online learning, and uh, you know the, the the younger students are have had a tough time. A with tough that. time, and I'm, I'm glad you said that because now my my mission is is to take a look at this 939 thousand that's going to come online, and start thinking strategically about how to deploy those funds to help our students recover. Yeah, right. To to get our students back to being whole. Mm -hmm. We we have. Um, done some things this year that we had to do yep. to, let, for example, um, take our reading specialists and put them back in classrooms and yep. our librarians back in classrooms. Yep. And we did that to lower class sizes so that we could maintain six feet of distance. Sure. Right? Um, but because we did that, we didn't provide a, many of those interventions and supports that in a normal year we would. Sure. So the funds that are coming from the federal government I'm going to be working with my team, my leadership team, and my teachers to start catching our kids back up. Yeah. And, and that will start this summer. I'm hoping that my next podcast with you um, in May, mm -hmm. I can talk about some really exciting summer programs sure. that we're building for our students yeah. to start catching them up. Mm -hmm. right? We know many of our kids are behind in reading and math and other supports. And... Of course, many of our kids are, are back in our classroom now and experiencing the effects of the, the traumatic experience that Absolutely. we've experienced and, and the work of our very talented counselors and psychologists and social workers and administrators are being tested every day. Yes, absolutely. So we have a lot of work to do going forward. I see the, the, the budget that our voters are going to um, vote, for, vote on in, mm -hmm. on uh, May 10th is, is, is the, the core. Mm -hmm. And and of course, I'm looking at these federal funds and, and being strategic about how we use those as we identify students and work with those students and their families to catch them up as quickly as we can. Yeah. Well, like, again, you've got, the, you know, academic needs and you've also got uh, – your uh, your social needs, uh, you know, as far as that goes, because there has definitely been an impact, you know, uh, there as well. And sometimes those impacts, especially with the younger students, is is much more dramatic than the older students. Right. Yeah. And and, and we we know uh, because we have lots of experience with it, uh, and are aware of um, how hard it is to catch up. You know. It, if, if students aren't reading on grade level at certain benchmarks in their life, it becomes even more complicated sure. to catch them up. Because lots of times students make interesting transitions mm -hmm. from, for example, the, the very earliest phases where students are learning to read mm -hmm. to a point where they're reading to learn, right? So we need to make sure that those benchmarks are happening. So mm -hmm. that students, when they're learning the, the basics of literacy and, and those very early literacy skills that involve ph phonics and decoding and word recognition, mm -hmm. to being able to apply those so that when they read Chaucer in high school, they understand Chaucer. Right? <laughs> and, exactly. And, and if students haven't made that transition, we have an obligation to catch them up. Sure. So that they they can can make those pivots. Sure, and and not to mention uh, developing the the social skills that they've been missing out on, and you know, in yeah. non person or not in person, uh, you know, learning learning experiences. That that in itself too is uh, 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 a valuable part of the the whole uh, academic uh, learning process. For sure. Um, so so one quick pivot I'd like to yeah, talk to you a little bit about has to do with. Um, some of our facilities work and our, our mm -hmm. capital needs mm -hmm. here in, in, in the schools. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things I'm, I'm 
very grateful for that that Portland invested in for our students years ago mm-hmm. were the Chromebooks, right? Yep. Thank goodness somebody five, six years ago had the, the vision to equip our students in grades 5 through 12 with Chromebooks. Mm-hmm. Because of that, we were quickly able to adjust to online learning. Mm-hmm. That, that investment was made without any foreknowledge that a pandemic was coming. Correct, yeah. But boy, was that a sage and wise investment in terms sure. of prepping for what we're dealing with now. Absolutely. Right? Um, so this year, I worked with the town, and I am very grateful to um, Susan, uh, the town council, and Tom for the uh, Robinson, the the Finance director. Uh, the finance yeah. director for the. Now we're going to be leasing Chromebooks, and some of the Chromebooks, of course, as everybody knows about technology, after five years, they're old and they don't work it's anymore. Junk. Right? It's junk. It's <laughs> junk, right? So, um, the, the town is supporting us with a, a leasing, and we're going to continue to make sure that all of our students have that Chromebook. And, and I am incredibly grateful for their for their support in that area. Sure. And the the other thing last night, in fact, uh, you know, as far as in relation to. Uh, uh, planning and so forth. Uh, we had a town meeting last night, uh, which the uh, uh, voters overwhelmingly approved the, all of the energy upgrades yeah. that were done in the school system, and uh, you know, and so forth. So, and that you know ultimately affects the bottom line when you start to you know keep uh, costs in check yeah. if you can save, uh, you know, with with energy costs. Yeah, and of course, you know, in, in the area of, of capital improvements, we do need a, a new track. Our, yes, we our do. track is in in very poor condition right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I am working with um, uh, the, the Board of Ed and the Town Council and the state to see what we can do in that area. Sure. Uh, we don't have a, a game plan yet, but it is everybody is aware of right. the need, and, and I'm going to be working to see um, how we can get that done because the, the track, it, 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 it's almost... Well, and, you know, completely it, gone. ultimately it, it becomes a safety issue. And, you know, when you're dealing with safety and liability, um, you know, that's, that's one road that you don't want to go down you know, and so forth. Yep. And then the last thing, I'll just seed the clouds. And this is going to be uh, a conversation that I want to have with the community for the next five to 10 years mm-hmm. is that um, our buildings are aging, you know, sure. so everybody's aware. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go just visit Gildersleeve, uh, Valley View and, and Brownstone. And, and you'll see buildings that um, were built in some cases. I'm not sure exactly what Brownstone was, but I think that's a 1930s Yes, yes. Project, yep. right? Um, Gil- Valley View and, and Gildersleeve were, were more of the, the 60s, 60s yeah. you know, the baby boom yep, times. Yep. Um, but they're, 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 they're in need of a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have formed a committee, a facilities study committee, a steering committee this year, and, and we're beginning the process of, of uh, assessing the needs mm-hmm. in those buildings and um, you know, developing a long-term 10-year strategic plan. Mm-hmm for how we continue to make sure those buildings are safe, Mm -hmm. operate efficiently, and provide for a a 21st century high-quality education for our our students and and give our teachers the tools and the space that they need to provide for a high-quality education. Exactly, Uh, exactly. No plans yet, but a a plan to develop a plan is is underway. Well, that's... A lot of times, that's half the battle. Yes, you know, uh, <laughs> rather than something coming up and hitting you in the back of the head and say, "Oh my God, I didn't see that coming." You right. know, yeah, that gets to a situation. But uh, you know, the foresight again uh, of not only the town side, but uh, you know, your your educational uh, you know leadership team and so forth is uh, you know very well recognized, and you guys do a, a yeoman's job and and you know. Uh, kind of keeping all the balls in the air, so to speak, and it really does. So, congratulate you on that. So, yeah. well, well we're, we're, it's work that's being done. And then I'll just leave with leave with one other um, offer. Sure, I'm gonna you know post this podcast up this Friday and and, yep. and put all of the information, the detailed detailed information about the budget on the website. Mm-hmm. If any member of our community, any parent, or even if you don't have kids in the school and you just want to know more. C B R I T T O N at portlandct.us. That mm-hmm. is my email. Email me. I will be happy to call you and speak with you personally and answer any questions you have so that on May 10th, 
you can make an informed decision. Great, great. Well, we will certainly do that and uh, get it up. And again, we're going to get this uh, podcast post-process so we can also get it with some visuals and going on the Comcast uh, public education channel. So that's good. On a lighter note, okay, <laughs> tell us, uh, we're, obviously we're, we're coming up on the last quarter in school, yeah. okay? So uh, we're hoping, uh, tell us about graduation. I'm hoping we're having an outside graduation and uh any inklings on that? Uh, it, it is going to happen this year. Look, Great. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I, I'm glad you asked. I am going from this podcast to Kate Lawson, our principal's office, and she is going to be sharing all of the plans for the prom. Okay. Me. We're having winter sports awards. Night. It's going to be a little different, but there are po- components of it in person. Great. We're, we're getting there. That's it, good. It, it's, it, is, it is starting to come back to a semblance of normal. We're not entirely there yet, but but we're well on our way. And we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yep. so to speak. So great. Dr. Charles Britton, thank you, uh, our superintendent of schools here. And again, uh, this is our Portland School District uh, podcast. This is ap- actually episode number 13. And we are in our Town Tech Educational Podcast Studio here at the school. And uh, so, uh, again, this uh, podcast can be heard on wherever you see your podcasts and uh, uh, anchor on iTunes, on Amazon, on on uh, Spotify, uh, you know, just click on our website and you'll be able to get to it and uh, check out all of the episodes. They're very informative. And uh, we're going to be doing a podcast, I think, on Friday with Susan and for the town. And we're going to have our uh, yeah, our usual appearance by Dr. Russ Melmont uh, from the Chatham Health District. Good. So, and go vote, right? May 10th? Go that vote. Yeah, that is May 10th. And uh, get out there and vote. And uh, again, Ryan Curley, our town clerk, says that uh, obviously, Anybody wanting an absentee ballot, you can get those down at the town hall or request one. And uh, so if you feel uncomfortable going to the polls, uh, they do encourage the the absentee ballots in the mail-in. So that would be great. So, uh, Dr. Britton, thank you so much. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Until next time, okay, uh, stay home, stay safe, wash your hands, and above all, wear your mask. See you soon. Thanks. This podcast was produced by the Town Tech Educational Partnership Program, which is a partnership between Portland High School and the Portland Town Hall. If you're looking to start a podcast for your business or organization, check out towntech.org forward slash podcast to learn more.